Howdy rowdy everyone, Lightning here, and I'm here with my review for The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 10, Omega. Alright. So, to start things off, we pr there was a lot of indication that this was going to be like sort of a alpha or whisper origin slash flashback uh, episode, which it kind of was. It was uh, more so based around Alpha and Lydia, like, the story was, uh, was told through the eyes of Lydia, of what she remembers when she was just a little kid at the start of the apocalypse, and what she remembers about her mom and dad, which is something that was never explored in the comics, it was just, like, uh, mother, daughter, Alpha, and Lydia, no dad, her husband, or anything, but, so it's interesting that they added that to, and it's very unique, and, and I think I like it. Like, I really do like it. So, the husband to Alpha is uh, Frank, and he <clears throat> and he is also the father to Lydia. So, it kind of starts off with, like, Frank telling Lydia, like, nobody's coming. And just sort of giving her this dead look, uh, dead look with his eyes. And basically, when we get, when we get all the flashbacks and stuff from this episode, it's mostly Lydia telling... Uh, Henry most of the stuff and she's also a point at a moment where she tells Daryl a lot of the stuff as well but most of it she tells Henry because Henry's still in the cell and then Henry being very naive as he is told Lydia about the kingdom where he's from and about his parents who are the leaders of the kingdom Daryl comes in and is like what is wrong with you why are you telling her about the kingdom in which he's right about that, and then Henry calls Daryl an a-hole and walks off. <laughs> so that was uh, very stupid on Henry's part to tell Lydia all of that information. You don't just give that stuff up. You, I mean, he may like Lydia and believe she's a good person, but he doesn't even know her that well. Like, he needs to just slow down a little bit. Uh, just do... The only way he, he could have said anything about the kingdom is if Lydia said something about her about her people and where they are. Like it could be like a tick for attack. Could have been like that. Would have been much better. But Daryl uh later goes down there to uh give Lydia some medicine because she keeps picking at her ear and when he's giving her water, she he gives her water through a ladle. And she uses it to try to attack Daryl. Then he pulls up her sleeve and sees all these lashes on her arm. And it's kind of and and then there's moment. All right, so the lashes are on her arm come from a beating, and the the indication we were getting from this uh, from the first flashbacks was that uh, Frank was the abusive one. But Frank has been dead for a while, and I don't even think that lashes like that last forever. So they couldn't have been from Frank. They were actually from Alpha, which is what Lydia reveals uh, to Daryl when he comes down there again uh, later on. And then there's a very interesting moment when uh, it cuts back to where it, it flashes back to Alpha, Lydia, and Frank, where they are in the moldy basement. I think the first flashback we saw it was 23 days in then the next flashback we saw was 43 days in so it's like 20 days later one of the guys i think his name was matthias started freaking out and he started like calling for help as there was gunfire going on outside the moldy basement along with uh a but you could hear walkers in the background as well with the gunfire and alpha's like shut up you stupid idiot you're gonna get us all killed then he throws him to the down or he throws him to the ground and suffocates him, crushing his windpipe. Like, dang. Alpha just went full savage. And it kind of indicates that she was already a crazy person to begin with. And then Frank was holding Lydia and starts to, like, sing to her. He's like, Lydia, oh Lydia, the tattooed lady. I don't remember how it goes, but he has, like, the tat. He has the name Lydia tattooed on his arm. And we saw Alpha had that at the beginning. So 
what what I'm trying to say is that Lydia kept getting her story mixed up. She didn't know which one of them had the tattoo, or if they both had the tattoo. And the big reveal of this is like all the moments we saw of Frank hinted at being the one that being abusive uh, was actually not Frank. It was actually Alpha, her mom, who was the abusive one the whole time. And like there was a part where Frank cut his beard with some scissors saying, the world's over. I'm doing what I want now. And that was actually Alpha who cut her hair off instead. It wasn't a Frank, so it was like a role reversal. And the only reason why Lydia remembered it that way of her father being the abusive one was because her mom told her, her what happened over the many years. Said that said that Frank was the abusive one, your father Frank was the abusive one, I was not, I cared for you. And also told her that her father got bit by a walker and that it was her fault. But he saved her when that was actually not the case. Uh, Alpha killed Frank because uh, he because he was putting because in her mind he was putting their daughter Lydia in danger by not leaving because there was chaos breaking out because that guy that Alpha suffocated reanimated and started attacking causing a whole bunch of chaos and Alpha was like we need to leave and then Frank is like no, Lydia stays with me. You can go if you want, but Lydia stays with me. And then Alpha's like, the hell she does. And then she kills Frank right in front of Lydia and does the iconic shh. So that's where it comes from. That is very disturbing. She's like, shush, Lydia, while I kill your father right in front of you. That is messed up. But, so what we get out of all this is that uh, Alpha was sort of just a crazy person even at the start of the apocalypse and that th that it just emboldened her even more to be the way she is now like she was all indicated that it was she was already kind of that way but the start of the apocalypse and the world ending it just sort of emboldened her and made her embrace her uh, embrace her brutality uh, uh, even more. So she was kind of already that way. And then uh, there's also a PTSD moment for Lydia. Like at night, Henry lets her out because he wants to show her around. And probably the most disgusting thing is they both eat worms. Like, Lydia eats a worm, and then she grabs another worm, sucks the dirt off of it, and gives it to Henry, who eats it. Like, what are you doing, Henry? Ugh. That was really gross. But at least she was nice enough to clean it for him. Like, she just ate one with dirt on it. She, like, sucked the dirt off of it for him so he could eat it. And then, uh... Henry continues showing Lydia around and she like grab she has a hammer behind her back and she's getting ready to smash Henry over the head with it and but then she puts the hammer down when she starts hearing a baby crying which triggers like this flash of memories like a PTSD moment and in one of the flashbacks it shows her mom Alpha holding holding a walker mask and saying put it on this is how we live and that is so messed up because uh, wh why, wh wh what would you do if you were so young like Lydia was and your mom tells you hey put this on this is how we live like this is the only way we can live that is just messed up and then on top of that on, on top of the fact that Alpha uh, physically abuses her like beats her Oh man, so this episode got very deep, in, especially into topics like domestic abuse and such. And speaking of which, Henry revealed to Daryl about why Carol kept her hair so short, saying that her first husband, Ed, would grab her long hair and throw her up against the wall, so use it against her, so she just cut it all off so he wouldn't be able to do that. 
and the reason why it's so long as it is right now because it took her very long to feel comfortable and safe again with Ezekiel so at least we now know why her hair is so long it's not just like oh I just want to grow my hair out there was a there's a meaning behind it so very deep episode especially to topics like domestic abuse as I said and then there was a little side plot that was happening with Magna and her group so Magna and her group uh, go out with Terra and a couple other hilltoppers to look for Luke and Alden. They find their ho horses being chewed on by walkers, or being eaten by walkers, and then Connie discovers that the horses were cut open with knives, skinned. So the Whisperers, like, skin the horses, probably for their hide, because it's going to be cold. you got to use all the animal hide you can get. I don't know if they got any meat because whisperers do hunt and it, I guess if they see horses horse meat I guess they would take back with them it's still pretty messed up but if you're living living in an animalistic primitive way as a uh, as the whisperers do you'll find all the food you can get even if even if it comes from a horse so that's all I could say about that but anyways Magna and her group were very defiant in Tara's orders to to go back to Hilltop, stay behind the walls until they figure out what, until they figure out what they're actually dealing with. Because there, it's not just Lydia's mother who's out there. There's a lot more of them, and they don't know how many there are. So it's best that they do go back behind the walls. And then Yumiko uh, says, uh, uh, calls for a vote and says, "I I vote we go out at night and search." Connie and Kelly say yes, and then Magna is just like, yeah, we'll go. Then at night, they do go, and they sneak out to the little uh, secret, I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce this, secret passageway that Rosita and Sasha used in Season 7, and I guess what Henry and those kids used to go out to that uh, place in the woods to get drunk and such. So they do that, and then... <sighs> Yumiko was the first one to call off the search because of how dark it is, even though she was the first one that said, I say we go. So that was a little dumb. It bothered me. It felt a little forced, but I'm not going to let it drag the entire episode down. Like, I love this episode. I think it was probably one of the better uh, filler episodes that this show has ever done. So I thought it was pretty good. But then... Uh, Kelly starts getting all emotional about Luke because uh, she reveals that Luke is the one who saved her and then Connie decides to stay behind with her sister Kelly and tells Magna and Yumiko to go back. And as Magna and Yumiko are leaving, there is a whisperer watching uh, Connie and Kelly from the woods and even their flashlights like pass over that whisperer. And they don't even notice. Like, that is mad creepy. Huh. And then, I think Tara notices that they snuck out and sends guards to get Connie and Kelly. And as Connie and Kelly are walking back, Kelly is with the guards, like, closer to the front. And Connie is somehow all the way behind them. I don't know why she was. The next thing you know, a bunch of... Whisperers start walking up to the gates of Hilltop. Kelly starts panicking because Connie is so far behind her. But Kelly is forced to get back inside Hilltop and Connie hides uh, in the crops, specifically in the cornfield, to hide from the Whisperers. And that makes me really nervous because she can't hear them. And she also can't hear the noise she's making within the crops because they'll probably hear some ruffling going on in the crops. And they're going to assume somebody's there. And she, Connie is deaf. She can't hear him. She can't hear the whispers whispering. And she can't hear the noise she's making by going through the crops. So I fear for Connie. But I think she might make it out in next episode. Which I'll say for uh, my predictions of episode uh, 11. That's coming out tomorrow. Just a couple hours before uh, it premieres. All right. Anyway, so Alpha and the Whispers walk up on Hilltop, and and we see Alpha walk to the top, and we finally walk to the gates, and we finally see what she looks like without her mask on, and oh boy, she looks 
terrifying. Like, she has all this dirt on her face. She just looks so good. Like, like I really like the makeup and special effects they did uh, with uh, Alpha. And I must say, Samantha Morton is doing such a good job as Alpha. I'm really impressed with it. And I'm really digging. I'm really digging the accent now. A lot of people didn't like it at first, but I'm really digging the accent now. But she walks up to the gates and says, "I am Alpha, and we only want one thing from you, my daughter." And then the episode ends. So the cliffhanger is Alpha shows up at the hilltop and announces herself, and and announces her presence. And it looks like the next episode, the exchange is going to happen. But my thing is, is uh, where is Luke and Alden? Are they dead? Are they alive? But we'll just have to wait and see. All right, but that's going to be it for my review of The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 10, Omega. So anyway, guys, this is Light T25, Real T25 signing off. I will see you for my predictions for Episode 11, titled Bounty. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. Thank you